Significant TV, Significant Stories. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Tara Dillon Marcus. Tara is president of Dillon Marcus, and she's all about leadership, executive leadership. In fact, leadership these days sometimes needs to be unleashed, and Tara's going to tell us a little bit about how she and her team does that with executive teams. Tara, welcome to Significant mm. TV. Thanks, Fran. Thanks for having me. Sure, my yeah. pleasure. You know, we've known each other for years. Yes. I mean, even before your children were born. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, from ASTD, which was what it was called mm -hmm. back then, mm -hmm. till now, leadership has really changed in a lot of ways. Mm. And in some ways, it stayed the same. Yeah. Um, why does leadership need to be unleashed? Hmm. I, I just think uh, organizations are really interested in uh, excellence, in high performance, and I think the way that happens is through really good leadership. Hmm. Um, you know, any of the excellent um, organizations that sort of stand the test of time, uh, you can trace back to really good leadership, I believe. Yeah. Now, I know employees that work somewhere and they're unhappy um, and sometimes no. no I know it's shocking it's shocking they're probably just, only just those three you know, right those three right <laughs> um, and yeah. sometimes they blame it on leadership sometimes they don't how do you define excellent leadership what are some mm -hmm. of those components well I just think excellent leaders um, have certain qualities and certain traits and an appreciation of their workforce. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you, you know, in one of the programs I lead, we have them share, we have the attendees share uh, stories of great leaders and great bosses that they've mm -hmm. had. And then they identify those characteristics. And they're, they're the ones you think mm -hmm. would be there. You know, mm -hmm. it's not small-minded. No, <laughs> uh, You no. know, it's none of those. It's <laughs> all of the other sort of... Uh, you know, grander, um, more generous and giving qualities um, that are there, yeah. So given that it's about the generous and giving qualities, why in unleashing your leadership program for women? Because often women are known as nurturers. Women are mm. known as giving. Sometimes that in corporate America, that's almost considered a negative. Yeah. Well, it's not about being a pushover, so mm -hmm. don't miss my uh, <laughs> sort of, you know, in my opinion, the most effective leaders have a strong sense of themselves and a mm -hmm. strong sort of unshakable core mm -hmm. um, that's not uh, sort of uh, th doesn't go with the tide. Mm -hmm. And those those leaders, whether they're men or women, whether if, when they're confident in their self, if, if, they, if they have that confidence in themselves, it's um, really easy to foster the leadership in others. And so not only is it about being a leader yourself, but at the level we're work working at with executive teams, it's about causing the leadership in others. And that is a whole different um, game. And it requires not just that your own performance is good, but now your performance is really the performance of others. And can you let go? Can you coach? Mm -hmm. um, can you produce results uh, while you are um, developing others? And right. it's a whole different ball game. It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about this this poster. I call it an ad. Yeah. But it, it's very thought provoking. Um, yeah. Share it with the yeah. audience. And how did that come about? So when we were thinking about the brand for our organization and, and what our sort of main purpose is, it really was to unleash the full potential of people and of organizations. And we just mm -hmm. wanted an image that captured that. Mm -hmm. And um, we live right next door to an elementary school and we watch the kids running out of school mm -hmm. uh, for recess. <laughs> you know how they run out for? Right, exactly. Oh, I'm free, so I'm free. Yeah, yeah, I'm out and I'm free. And we thought, imagine if, p if people were running to work with that kind of abandon oh and that kind of right? <laughs> right and that's what inspires us so we're interested mm. in creating really world-class organizations the way we think you start is with um, a world-class executive team and mm. really having them 
um, understand their collective influence, not their influence as individuals, but to see that they have a collective role um, in influencing the organization, what, what they model, what they say, what they do, what they don't do, mm -hmm. what they're intentional about, if they're living the values, if they're not living the values, all of it. Right. Um, and that makes a difference. And our ultimate goal is that employees are like, I I'm excited to go to work. I'm happy um, creating something new. I'm, I'm valued. I'm contributing. And it doesn't mm -hmm. take much to go from the I don't want to go to work to I want to go to work in terms of leadership, in my opinion. That, that's really powerful. I know that you have some photos of groups that you've worked with yeah. and they'll, they'll be showing on the screen. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about some of the groups that you've worked with and why do they hire you? What, mm. why, what is going on in their organization or with that executive team yeah. that makes them say now is the time to do something about it. Yeah. Well, it's funny. We have an intake form, sort of, mm -hmm. you know, when we go meet with a prospective client and we say, what's going on? And uh, typically, it's, uh, it's, it's almost the same thing in every organization. And this is across industry. So mm -hmm. um, it's siloed. Mm -hmm. uh, right. every, they're working in a silo. They're not working collaborative. Um, it's mainly about the people. They're not saying we don't understand how, they're not calling us because they don't understand how to do their business. So mm -hmm. the attorneys aren't calling us because they don't know how to be attorneys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the people in healthcare aren't saying we don't know how to do healthcare. It's, it's mostly how do we uh, get along with each other? How do we uh, strategize and plan and make those th plans come to life? So mm -hmm. mainly that. Okay. Yeah. And when you reflect back on some of the teams that you've worked mm -hmm. with, and I'm sure there are mem many memorable moments, Yeah. what's a memorable moment huh. for you? And maybe what artifacts do you have about those memorable moments? Hmm. Um, well, uh, we also run a CEO uh, executive group. It's called the Sounding Board. So yeah. the original idea was that uh, the CEOs would get together and in a real safe place be able to share some of their challenges and get advice from other CEOs in the same position. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, we started visiting the offices of some of our sounding board members. So we would have the meeting at the office of somebody's. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that our sounding board members really loved visiting other businesses. It's mm -hmm. like a field trips for adults, right, really. Exactly. And exactly. field trips in, in school were the biggest. <laughs> exactly, uh, almost uh, as good as recess, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> everything relates back to uh, elementary school, everything in life, it seems. And uh, so uh, we started uh, scheduling uh, trips to really great organizations. So we've been to, uh, we've uh, talked to the treasurer of Wawa and learned about their oh, organization. Okay. And so we not only hear from the leader about the organization, we hear about their personal journey because that's just as interesting how they got there with the, the, the right. twists and the turns. Connie Williams from the um, Philadelphia Museum of Art when she mm. was in charge of that. And then one of our best was Jack Bogle. He's a Princeton grad. I know. You know that, know. right? So yeah. we saw Tell him. Us about this. So Jack Bogle, for folks who may not remember or know, um, is uh, the founder of Vanguard, one of the probably the most successful financial institutions. Mm -hmm. And we saw him speaking at um, uh, Princeton, mm -hmm. and I was actually sitting near his wife. Ah. And he still, after all of these years, just really, you could tell he really loved, still loves her, like mm -hmm. just. And it was so sweet to see that. And then we followed up with him, and it's, we said, could we bring you know, our group to your to, to visit you and he said yes so he spent the better part of a day with us like three quarters wow. of the day we had lunch together he shared mm -hmm. amazing his mm -hmm. stories of when he started why he thought the way he thought and uh, um, one of the neat things is when we were waiting to see him his administrative assistant who had been his administrative assistant for 30 years wow. whispers to me and says um, I've had cancer three times she said and uh, Jack took me back every time. Wow. And what, I mean, talk about loyalty. Mm -hmm. This woman, loyal, and that's what I mean about great leaders know how to cultivate that loyalty. And it's not, uh, it's just really almost about doing the right thing. Right. Like, that's right. the right thing to take somebody back when exactly. they're after they're ill. Right. It just is. It is. Um, and so when. Loyalty we, and love. I mean, a true love mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Well, in, in my opinion, loyalty, so right now, reputation is everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it spreads like wildfire. So people know your reputation. 
um, as an individual leader, they also know the reputation of your com of your company, and so um, people can steal your product. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Dunkin' Donuts can make the same product that Wawa can in a mm -hmm. minute. They mm -hmm. copy each other. I mean, so everybody can rep replicate your product. They can replicate your price. Mm -hmm. Come pretty close. So what's the difference? Why? You know, what has me go to Wawa? Well, if you talk to people who go to Wawa, they are loyal, mm -hmm. and. So if you can figure out how to get that loyalty from your the people who work for you or your customers, that's gold. That's really, really hard to steal. I'm a loyal fan of Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Try to get me not to use it. Right. Same here. Right? Same it here. would take a lot for me mm -hmm. not to not to speak well of it and not to use it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So Oh, so this, this is note. yeah. So we went to visit Jack Bogle. Great visit. We gave him a few gifts as mm -hmm. just to say uh, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And about two weeks later, we get a typed uh, envelope in the mail. Typed. Mm -hmm. um, so that just made us chuckle. <laughs> we opened up the envelope, and it's a handwritten note from Jack Bogle um, uh. saying thank you. And I loved his closing line where he says, Good luck to you all as we march together down the road of life. So this man gets it's about business, mm -hmm. but it's also about marching down the road of life. And mm -hmm. he didn't make his fortune, and this company didn't make his fortune by cheating people. He actually uh, said, we all can win in this, and mm -hmm. that's why his uh, company is winning. Right. And right. his whole methodology about how he grew his business, we asked him, and really, really simple, he said, and this was back when they had personnel, not HR. He oh, said, right. Oh, my goodness. So okay. the personnel person <laughs> said, well, how do I, who do I hire and how do I, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, hire smart, nice people mm -hmm. and then tell them to hire smart, nice people. Wow. And Pay I, it forward. And I think, um, you know, we can make it all complicated, but to me, that's that was it. That's a good it. philosophy. Yeah. That's a good philosophy. Yeah. So thanks, Jack, for <laughs> um, having us, seeing us, and for... And also the power of a handwritten thank you note. I mean, mm. if Jack Bogle has time to write a handwritten thank you note. Good point. You know? Good point. Can the rest of us yeah. say we don't? We can find it. Yeah. We can find it. Yeah. Before we close, we touched on love in different ways uh -huh. and loyalty. Share with us this connection with the book, Feel the Love. Yeah. So Feel the Love sort of found us. We didn't find it. Um, mm -hmm. It's a funny story. My husband, Evan, is also a keynote speaker. So he and uh, Tom Burgoyne, who is the best friend of the Philly Fanatic <laughs> for almost the past 30 years, um, had been asked at the same time to speak at the same conference mm -hmm. by two different people. And so it came down to, well, we can't have both of you. So um, Tom Burgoyne was the one who spoke that year. And, uh, and Evan ended up speaking the next year. But mm -hmm. uh, the man who extended the offer of speaking was so gracious invited Evan to come to the um, the conference mm -hmm. um, and so he and Tom met um, Evan said I think I can help you with some of your storytelling you know mm -hmm. and to connect it to a purpose uh, long story longer we started talking about wow how you know, people love the fanatic. They just Absolutely. don't like the fanatic. Absolutely. They, right? So, and Philly, Philadelphians yeah. don't always love no. <laughs> by and, reputation. Yeah. <laughs> so the Philly fanatic is pure. Uh, people love. And so we started dissecting what do they love about the Philly fanatic and what is it that he does? Mm -hmm. And so we looked at, uh, there's some real clear, you know, leadership principles. The big smooch, he, he goes mm -hmm. out right. first. And so the big smooch <laughs> is one of the principles. It's sort of show them love first. So as a leader, don't be waiting for, you know, what mm -hmm. are you going to do for me lately? But, um, you know, sure what can love. I do for you? Start, you start first. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's the book, Feel the Love. And, uh, yeah, it's been a really, uh, wonderful partnership. Mm. Mm -hmm. And one that's growing. Yeah. 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 It's a great message for the, for mm -hmm. this time, mm -hmm. you know, this, this time in our country, which is, it's a bit fearful. Mm -hmm. So the love message, I don't, I don't think, I don't mean, I don't think it's ever an old message, but it's definitely coming out of the closet. There are more and more companies. Subaru mm -hmm. has a love promise, and mm -hmm. so people are understanding. People and organizations are understanding the power of love, and that it's not, it's absolutely not soft, and that um, it drives every indicator of business success from safety to you know all the you know profitability. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a wonderful yeah. way to sort of end our conversation. Mm -hmm. Really where we started. Yeah. Unleashing leadership 
executive yeah. teams, um, modeling behavior, and really caring about others. Yeah. yeah. And that manifests itself. Yeah. So in that's love. it. Your your listeners don't have to read another book. <laughs> <laughs> Go to another <laughs> conference. No, it's that's behavior. it. That's it's it. Behavior. That's wonderful. Uh -huh. Tara, thanks so much yeah. for joining us today. My pleasure. Really appreciate you, you being here. Thank significant you. stories, significant TV, significant entrepreneurs like Tara Marcus. Feel the love. Be the love. Join us next time as we continue to share significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm.